Long overdue vlogs. Footage I shot quite some time ago, but didn't get around to finally editing till much later. It's long overdue vlogs. After I passed through Pennsylvania briefly last year and vlogged the Turkey Hill experience, I've had a few people ask me if I would ever do a video about Hershey Park. Well, I happen to be in Pennsylvania this weekend for a wedding, and I don't have time to visit Hershey Park. But I've been to Hershey Park a handful of times before, once when I was very little, once at the end of my senior year of college in 2009, and two days in 2012 when I spent a week visiting loved ones in Pennsylvania. And I shot some b-roll on the 2012 trip for an abandoned idea for a Blitz Travaganza finale episode where I escape Orlando's theme parks only to be trapped by Pennsylvania's theme parks. But then, even the supposedly simple episodes of the Blitz Travaganza were getting too complicated, so I completely scrapped that idea. But I figured I'd share that b-roll with you and add my new snarky commentary right now! So welcome one and all to Dave Did Hershey Park about seven years ago and only filmed some of it. Unlike most of my favorite theme parks, Hershey Park is not about immersing you in a magical faraway world, but about celebrating the history of the town you're in. Oh, there was the base level of fun themed decor in the entry plaza around the store called Hershey Park Place, a name and two words for locations. Oh, and if there's any doubt that I shot this in 2012, check out these totally hip Jersey Shore Christmas ornaments in the gift shop. But no, this park's not about world building, this park is just cause Milton Hershey thought his factory town could use a park for the employees. And then the park thought this park could use a statue of Milton Hershey. Yeah, not exactly the partner statue, is it? But every good park has characters, like the corporate dystopian cluster of nonsense that is the Hershey's Product Character Party, sponsored by a different brand altogether. Why are some of the faces on the wrappers and some on the candy itself? Like, I assume for some of these the wrappers are the clothing, but... Your face isn't part of your clothing, is it? Are you insinuating that my clothes are alive? What are the evolutionary advantages in different climates for chocolate face versus wrapper face? But Hershey Park does have something that lots of parks don't have. A zoo! Sure, Bush Gardens in Animal Kingdom and the like have zoo elements, but this is just a separate zoo experience connected to the park. And for a local park, I think that's pretty cool. Provide as many types of experiences as possible for your locals. As far as rides go, it's... You know, mostly roller coasters and flat rides, carnival stuff. And again, that's fine. This park isn't about immersive worlds, it's about celebrating the town you're in and giving that town a park. In fact, the monorail even took us around town, showing you the home of the Hershey Corporate Masters. There are a few attempts at narrative rides, like this really cheap and run-down, yet still charming Dry Gulch Railroad, because every park in the world needs something western. There was also the one ride branded to a Hershey product, a shooting dark ride themed after extreme sports and Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, hosted by the most terrifying sportscaster animatronics ever! I mean, I always want to give local parks credit for even having animatronics, but gah! It's okay, they're dead now. But the most elaborate dark ride didn't even require park admission. It's the Hershey's Chocolate World ride right outside the park. You entered the queue bordered with fake rope. The ceiling had real rope, but all we got to touch was fake rope. We measly floor walkers can't be trusted with that valuable ceiling rope. The ride had more animatronics than you usually get at local parks, such as these three singing cows with very elongated torsos. Like seriously, there's their back, there's their front, what angle are they standing at? This ride is mostly a tour of the fake factory. They don't trust tourists near the real Hershey's factory, but here's a recreation of what that factory is kinda like. You know, the kind of thing I expected the Turkey Hill experience to be. Anyway, here's where I just insert all the jokes from the opening credits of the Willy Wonka riff tracks. Those are all the roaches they sweep from the factory floor every night. <laughs> but the thing I always get the most mileage out of for videos is the live shows, and like any good local park, there were quite a few throughout the park. Like this Country Western review tucked back in a corner here. And again, if there's any doubt that I filmed this in 2012... <laughs> But the two big shows were in this big theater. Rock the Jukebox is, of course, a jukebox musical, focusing on dancing to iconic rock tunes through the decades. It begins with this couple discovering a covered old 50s jukebox. Oh, my mistake, it's a 90s jukebox. a jukebox that controls her mood because she acts different based on what song is playing. Yes, 
I mean, if you're just gonna drop her at every record scratch, you should keep your hands to yourself. Well, now you've done it. You've set off the jukebox violence alarm. You know, this is why some stations pulled the Happy Days pilot mid-airing. Now there's a bunch of dancers. Well, I guess they broke the jukebox because now they have to do their own singing. This jukebox town where jukeboxes are left abandoned around every corner. Wait, you're a fully grown adult and your grandparents are my parents' age? God, I'm old. Dancing on a piano. It's not just for FAO Schwartz anymore. Oh sure, when my friends try to spin around the piano I'm dancing on, we get kicked out of the George Winston concert. <laughs> She has an awfully big smile for this particular song. Now don't get me wrong, I love Yesterday, but this seems like a melancholy choice for a show called Rock the Jukebox. Like, there are so many upbeat, danceable tunes the Beatles did, and this looks more like an in-memoriam for the band. You know half of them are still with us, knock on wood, right? <laughs> I've been trapped behind this song title! Yes, in the history of rock music, it goes straight from the Beatles to white people covering Gloria Gaynor. Are they trying to imply that this is the response to yesterday? Like, this is why she had to go? You actually do know she did say and you just weren't listening? The something wrong you said was trying to hurt her with goodbye? And in accordance with Beetlejuice law, are we going to get a version of It's Raining Men later? Let's go. So this show isn't really Rock the Jukebox anymore, is it? It's more of Disco the Jukebox. And they're attacking the audience! They're gonna arson up this whole place, aren't they? Before you take me to Funky Town, I just need to know, is it another jukebox town? Because I can only live in jukebox towns. I mean, I hope so, because otherwise why do we come to a show explicitly about rocking a jukebox? So we get a little Guns N' Roses and a little Kansas. individual numbers in this show are well done, but even by jukebox musical standards, I'm not noticing a particularly coherent theme. Like, at the start it seemed like they were doing a history of rock theme, but that was abandoned really quickly. This playlist doesn't have much of a flow, it's just, uh, let's do this song next. The most coherent part in a show called Rock the Jukebox was the disco medley. Wait, we've gone from Kansas to Boston, so I guess the coherent theme is now bands named after places. So next we're gonna get Chicago. Nope, it's Journey. 
And how do you get to Kansas or Boston? By taking a journey. It still ties together. Eh? Eh? The top recording artists are just a click away on Rhapsody, Pandora, MySpace, and YouTube. You kids today with your MySpaces. In my day, the only way we had to hear music was mariachi bands on the subway. Don't start acting all older than thou now, you 22-year-olds. Madonna and Prince performing together. Now back to Commander Hey, they're throwing another concept at us now. Could have been fun if the whole show was mashups like this, but hey. And a heartfelt tribute to Michael, because 2012 was during that window when he was briefly uncancelled. This might be more meaningful with one of the songs from his solo career. Highly condensed medley of his solo stuff. Are you telling Billy Jean to beat it? Might be a bad look. the confusing mishmash of spectacle that was Rock the Jukebox. <laughs> then there's Tap, or Tap the Show, I guess. This is another jukebox musical, but specifically for tap dancers. The logo appears to feature Tom Cruise going Ghost Protocol. Okay, somebody really messed up while setting up this puppet show. Oh, this show put in product placement not only for Hershey, but for the other show. Now that's synergy. We'll go ahead and brag about it. Okay, who's making Hershey s'mores in the toaster oven? Oh, it was one of those quick change blackouts. Fascinating rhythm. Well, don't oversell it, buddy. All right, gang, flying V. up this medley that kept going back and forth between 42nd Street and I Got Rhythm. What's next? The slower version of 42nd Street. Oh good, a third song. Me and My Shadow, appropriately enough, with shadows. Yeah, first they're rubbing it in the faces of people without rhythm, now they're rubbing it in the faces of people without shadows. That's just mean. Peter Pan is very easily offended. Oh 
oh, the cast of Book of Mormon is here. And now it's the ghosts of an old-timey vaudeville act up to their wacky shenanigans. <laughs> I mean, it's not just you and your shadow, it's like half a dozen of you and their half a dozen shadows. Well, we're back to 42nd Street, but this time it's in front of a Windows Media Player screen. Uh, either I'm back at Wizarding World watching the Triwizard Show, or something potentially culturally insensitive is going on. It seems we're entering a montage of different dances around the world that influenced TAF as we know it today, and there's not really a whole lot to make fun of here, but the dancers were good and talented, so I hope they're doing well now. Then this girl comes out and starts singing... Imagine. Not what I usually think of as a dance song. Like, I get the Broadway hits and the cultural tunes, but John Lennon's melancholy ballad that kinda argues for nihilism as a path to enlightenment? Classic song, but not exactly a toe-tapper. And the dancers give it their all, and they don't miss a beat, but the dance beat really has to be forced into the ballad beat. This honestly would have made more sense to me in Rock the Jukebox than in Tap. Like, I take back everything I said about yesterday being out of place. The singer is good, the dancer is good, the choice is weird. energy up after that. Please, people, come on, get the energy up. Okay, so I never thought the titular dancing in the street in this song was, you know, tap dancing, but at least it's far less of a stretch for me. we are Springfield has become Woo! Springfield oh god the dancers have us surrounded first dancing in the aisle then dancing in the street then dancing shall consume the world dancing in the street Woo! I should have known that the street we were dancing in was 42nd. Oh yeah, Aerosmith, that notoriously boogie beat. Well, that's more accurate. And they bounce back to Aerosmith later. Is this a conflict of interest with Rock and Roller Coaster? Well, both of these shows had some confusing playlist choices, but both were fun, mostly high energy shows with fantastically talented performers, and they were a fun addition to this park. I don't know if they're still playing at this theater, but whatever is playing there is probably a similarly good time. Just like Hershey Park in general is a good time if you're in the area. I'd love to go back to Hershey Park again someday and give it a more in-depth look, but I still have a Blitz Travelfornia to finish before I begin a Blitz Travelvania. But in the meantime, I'll fondly remember the fun times I had there scattered throughout the years with various loved ones. <laughs> <laughs>